The anatomy of the abducens nerve. The abducens nerve or abducent nerve, also known as the sixth cranial nerve, cranial nerve 6, or simply CN6, is a cranial nerve in humans and various other animals that controls the movement of the lateral rectus muscle, one of the extraocular muscles responsible for outward gaze. It is a somatic efferent nerve. Structure and nucleus of the abducens nerve. Axial section of the brainstem, pons, at the level of the facial colliculus the abducens nucleus is located in the pons, on the floor of the fourth ventricle, at the level of the facial colliculus. Axons from the facial nerve loop around the abducens nucleus, creating a slight bulge, the facial colliculus, that is visible on the dorsal surface of the floor of the fourth ventricle. The abducens nucleus is close to the midline, like the other motor nuclei that control eye movements, the oculomotor and trochlear nuclei, motor axons leaving the abducens nucleus run ventrally and caudally through the pons. They pass lateral to the corticospinal tract, which runs longitudinally through the pons at this level, before exiting the brainstem at the pontomedullary junction. Course of the abducens nerve. The clivus level of the abducens nerve. The abducens nerve emerges from the brainstem at the junction of the pons and the medulla, superior to the medullary pyramid, and medial to the facial nerve. It runs upwards and forwards from this position to reach the eye, the nerve enters the subarachnoid space, more precisely, the pontine cistern, when it emerges from the brainstem. It runs upward between the pons and the clivus, and then pierces the dura mater to run between the dura and the skull through Durello's canal. At the apex of the petrous part of the temporal bone, it makes a sharp turn forward to enter the cavernous sinus. I and the cavernous sinus, it runs anterior ward alongside, infralateral to, the internal carotid artery. It enters the orbit through, medial end of, the superior orbital fissure, passing through the common tendinous ring to reach and innervate the lateral rectus muscle of the eye. Embryological Development of the Abducens Nerve The development of the abducens nerve embryologically involves a complex process of differentiation and migration of neural cells. Here's a brief overview. 1. Neural Tube Formation The central nervous system, CNS, develops from the neural tube, which forms during embryonic development. The neural tube gives rise to the brain and spinal cord. Point 2. Rhombencephalon development. Early in embryonic development, the neural tube differentiates into three primary brain vesicles, the prosencephalon, forebrain, mesencephalon, midbrain, and rhombencephalon, hindbrain. The rhombencephalon further divides into the metencephalon and myelencephalon. Point 3. Basal plate formation. Within the rhombencephalon, the basal plate forms the ventral portion, while the alar plate forms the dorsal portion. The basal plate gives rise to motor neurons that innervate muscles, including the abducens nerve. Point 4. Pons development, the metencephalon, which includes the pons, develops from the basal plate. The pons is located in the brainstem, and it plays a crucial role in various functions, including motor control and sensory processing. Point 5. Differentiation of nerve cells. Within the developing pons, neural progenitor cells differentiate into specific types of neurons, including those that will form the abducens nerve, cranial nerve 6.6. Migration and axon growth. As neurons differentiate, they extend axons to their target muscles or other neurons. In the case of the abducens nerve, motor neurons extend axons that will ultimately innervate the lateral rectus muscle of the eye, which is responsible for outward eye movement, abduction, point seven. Formation of cranial nerve nuclei, within the brainstem, motor nuclei associated with cranial nerves develop. The abducens nucleus, which contains motor neurons that give rise to the abducens nerve fibers, forms within the pons.8. Connection with target muscles, axons of the abducens nerve exit the brainstem and travel through the skull to reach the lateral rectus muscle in each eye. Upon reaching their target, these axons synapse with motor endplates on the muscle fibers, 
allowing for voluntary control of eye movement. Overall, the development of the abducens nerve embryologically involves the differentiation and migration of neural cells from the basal plate of the embryonic pons, ultimately forming the neural circuitry necessary for eye movement control. Functions of the abducens nerve Indeed, the abducens nerve, cranial nerve 6, serves a crucial role in eye movement control. Its primary function is to innervate the lateral rectus muscle of the eye. Here are the key functions associated with the abducens nerve 1. Innervation of lateral rectus muscle. The abducens nerve provides motor innervation to the lateral rectus muscle of the eye, which is responsible for abducting or moving the eye laterally away from the nose. Point 2. Control of horizontal eye movement. Activation of the lateral rectus muscle by the abducens nerve allows for abduction of the eye, contributing to horizontal eye movement. This movement is essential for tracking objects moving laterally or shifting gaze from one side to the other. Point 3. Coordination of eye movement. The abducens nerve works in coordination with other cranial nerves and extraocular muscles to ensure smooth and coordinated eye movements in response to visual stimuli and changes in direction of gaze. Point 4. Role in binocular vision. By controlling the movement of the lateral rectus muscle, the abducens nerve contributes to binocular vision, allowing both eyes to work together to focus on objects and perceive depth and distance accurately. Point 5. Maintenance of visual alignment. Proper functioning of the abducens nerve and the lateral rectus muscle is crucial for maintaining visual alignment and preventing conditions such as strabismus, ocular misalignment, or diplopia, double vision. Point 6. General somatic efferent, GSE, function. As noted, the abducens nerve carries axons of the general somatic efferent, GSE, type, meaning it primarily carries motor signals from the central nervous system to skeletal muscles. In this case, it controls the contraction of the lateral rectus muscle. Overall, the abducens nerve plays a vital role in controlling lateral eye movement, contributing to various aspects of vision and visual coordination essential for daily activities and spatial awareness. Clinical significance of the abducens nerve and damage. Limitation of abduction of the right eye. This individual tries to look to his right, but the right eye fails to turn to the side. Damage to the peripheral part of the abducens nerve will cause double vision, diplopia, due to the unopposed muscle tone of the medial rectus muscle. The affected eye is pulled to look towards the midline. In order to see without double vision, patients will rotate their heads so that both eyes are toward the temple. Partial damage to the abducens nerve causes weak or incomplete abduction of the affected eye. The diplopia is worse on attempts at looking laterally, the long course of the abducens nerve between the brainstem and the eye makes it vulnerable to injury at many levels. For example, fractures of the petrous temporal bone can selectively damage the nerve, as can aneurysms of the intracavernous carotid artery. Mass lesions that push the brainstem downward can damage the nerve by stretching it between the point where it emerges from the pons and the point where it hooks over the petrous temporal bone. The central anatomy of the sixth nerve predicts, correctly, that infarcts affecting the dorsal pons at the level of the abducens nucleus can also affect the facial nerve, producing an ipsilateral facial palsy together with a lateral rectus palsy. The anatomy also predicts, correctly, that infarcts involving the ventral pons can affect the sixth nerve and the corticospinal tract simultaneously, producing a lateral rectus palsy associated with a contralateral hemiparesis. These rare syndromes are of interest primarily as peripheral lesions of the abducens nerve. Complete interruption of the peripheral sixth nerve causes diplopia, double vision, due to the unopposed action of the medial rectus muscle. The affected eye is pulled medially. In order to see without double vision, patients will turn their head sideways so that both eyes are looking sideways. On formal testing, the affected eye cannot abduct past the midline, it cannot look sideways, toward the temple. Partial damage to the sixth nerve causes weak or incomplete abduction of the affected the diplopia is worse on attempted lateral gaze, as would be expected, since the lateral gaze muscle is impaired peripheral sixth nerve damage can be caused by tumors, aneurysms, or fractures, anything that directly compresses or stretches the nerve. 
Other processes that can damage the sixth nerve include strokes, infarctions, demyelination, infections, e.g. meningitis, cavernous sinus diseases and various neuropathies. Perhaps the most common overall cause of sixth nerve impairment is diabetic neuropathy. Iatrogenic injury is also known to occur, with the abducens nerve being the most commonly injured cranial nerve in halo orthosis placement, the resultant palsy is identified through loss of lateral gaze after application of the orthosis. Rare causes of isolated sixth nerve damage include Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome and Telosa Hunt syndrome. Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome is caused by thiamine deficiency, classically due to alcoholism. The characteristic ocular abnormalities are nystagmus and lateral rectus weakness. Tolosa Hunt syndrome is an idiopathic granulomatous disease that causes painful oculomotor, especially sixth nerve, palsies, indirect damage to the sixth nerve can be caused by any process, brain tumor, hydrocephalus, pseudotumor cerebri, hemorrhage, edema, that exerts downward pressure on the brainstem, causing the nerve to stretch along the clivus. This type of traction injury can affect either side first. A right-sided brain tumor can produce either a right-sided or a left-sided sixth nerve palsy as an initial sign. Thus a right-sided sixth nerve palsy does not necessarily imply a right-sided cause. Sixth nerve palsies are infamous as false localizing signs. Neurological signs are described as false localizing if they reflect dysfunction distant or remote from the expected anatomical location of pathology. Isolated sixth nerve palsies in children are assumed to be due to brain tumors until proven otherwise. Nuclear lesions of the abducens nerve. Damage to the abducens nucleus does not produce an isolated sixth nerve palsy, but rather a horizontal gaze palsy that affects both eyes simultaneously. The abducens nucleus contains two types of cells, motor neurons that control the lateral rectus muscle on the same side, and interneurons that cross the midline and connect to the contralateral oculomotor nucleus, which controls the medial rectus muscle of the opposite eye. In normal vision, lateral movement of one eye, lateral rectus muscle, is precisely coupled to medial movement of the other eye, medial rectus muscle, so that both eyes remain fixed on the same object. The control of conjugate gaze is mediated in the brainstem by the medial longitudinal fasciculus, MLF, a nerve tract that connects the three extraocular motor nuclei, abducens, trochlear, and oculomotor, into a single functional unit. Lesions of the abducens nucleus and the MLF produce observable sixth nerve problems, most notably internuclear ophthalmoplegia, INO. Supranuclear lesions of abducens nerve. The abducens nerve, also known as cranial nerve 6, is indeed under supranuclear control, meaning its function is regulated by higher brain centers above the level of the cranial nerve nucleus in the brainstem. Lesions affecting these supranuclear pathways can result in various abnormalities in eye movements. Here's how supranuclear lesions can impact the function of the abducens nerve. 1. Conjugate gaze disturbances. As you mentioned, cortical control of eye movements involves the coordination of both eyes in conjugate movements, such as saccades, rapid eye movements, smooth pursuit, tracking moving objects, and accommodation, adjusting focus. Lesions affecting the supranuclear pathways involved in these processes can lead to abnormalities in conjugate gaze, resulting in deficits in coordinating eye movements between the two eyes. Point two. Internuclear ophthalmoplegia INO, INO, is a common manifestation of supranuclear lesions affecting the pathways responsible for coordinating eye movements. It typically involves impairment of adduction, medial movement, of one eye due to disruption of the medial longitudinal fasciculus, MLF, which connects the abducens nucleus to the oculomotor nucleus. As a result, when attempting to look toward the side of the lesion, the affected eye fails to adduct properly, leading to horizontal diplopia, double vision. Point 3. Disconjugate gaze patterns. In some cases, supranuclear lesions can lead to disconjugate gaze patterns, where the two eyes move asynchronously or in different directions. This can manifest as abnormalities in the coordination of horizontal and vertical eye movements, leading to gaze palsies or other complex eye movement disorders. Point 4. 
Other associated symptoms, depending on the location and extent of the supranuclear lesion, patients may also experience additional neurological symptoms such as hemiparesis, weakness on one side of the body, sensory deficits, or cognitive impairments, reflecting the broader impact of the lesion on brain function. I in summary, supranuclear lesions affecting the pathways controlling eye movements can lead to various abnormalities in conjugate gaze, including impairments in coordinating movements. Of the abducens nerve and other cranial nerves involved in eye movement control, these disturbances can result in clinical signs and symptoms such as internuclear ophthalmoplegia and disconjugate gaze patterns, which are important diagnostic clues for identifying the underlying neurological pathology. Tuberculosis affects the abducens nerve. Tuberculosis, TB, can indeed affect the abducens nerve, resulting in cranial nerve deficits. TB is a bacterial infection caused by Mycobacterium tuberculosis that primarily affects the lungs but can also affect other organs, including the central nervous system, CNS. When TB affects the CNS, it can lead to a condition known as tuberculous meningitis, which involves inflammation of the meninges, the protective membranes covering the brain and spinal cord, due to the spread of TB bacteria. Here's how tuberculosis can affect the abducens nerve. 1. Tuberculous meningitis, TB bacteria can spread to the meninges, causing inflammation and damage to the surrounding structures, including the cranial nerves. Tuberculous meningitis can lead to the formation of tuberculomas, granulomas, or the development of hydrocephalus, accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid, both of which can exert pressure on nearby cranial nerves, including the abducens nerve. Point two. Direct invasion or compression. TB infection may directly invade the tissue surrounding the abducens nerve or cause compression of the nerve due to inflammation or the formation of granulomas within the brainstem or adjacent structures. This can result in dysfunction or damage to the abducens nerve, leading to symptoms such as diplopia, double vision, or impaired lateral eye movement. Point 3. Immunocompetent individuals. While TB can affect individuals with compromised immune systems more severely, it can also affect immunocompetent individuals. In fact, as you mentioned, the abducens nerve is the most commonly affected cranial nerve in immunocompetent people with tuberculosis. This underscores the potential for TB to cause cranial nerve deficits even in individuals without significant immunodeficiency. Point 4. Clinical presentation. Symptoms of abducens nerve involvement in tuberculosis may include horizontal diplopia, double vision, particularly on lateral gaze, due to impairment of the lateral rectus muscle innervated by the abducens nerve. Other signs of cranial nerve involvement, such as headache, facial weakness, or altered consciousness, may also be present depending on the extent and severity of CNS involvement that I in summary, tuberculosis can affect the abducens nerve, leading to cranial nerve deficits, particularly in cases of tuberculous meningitis or direct invasion of CNS structures by TB bacteria. Prompt diagnosis and appropriate management of TB and its neurological complications are essential to prevent long-term sequelae and improve patient outcomes. History and the etymology of the term abducens nerve. The etymology of the term abducens nerve is rooted in its Latin origin, nervus abducens. The Latin word abducens is the present participle of the verb abducere, which means to lead away or to draw away. This name reflects the primary function of the nerve, which is to innervate the lateral rectus muscle of the eye, responsible for abducting or moving the eye laterally away from the nose. Over time, variations in the translation and usage of anatomical terms have occurred, leading to differences between older and more recent literature. Historically, abducent nerve was a more common English translation, reflecting the use of the Latin root abducent dash to describe the action of the nerve. However, in recent literature and modern anatomical terminology, abducens nerve has become more prevalent. This usage aligns with the Latin term abducens and is now the preferred term in many medical textbooks, including the 39th edition of Gray's Anatomy and the medical subject heading, MESH, vocabulary used by the United States National Library of Medicine to index biomedical databases such as Medline and PubMed. Ultimately, 
both abducent nerve and abducens nerve, are recognized translations of the Latin term nervus abducens, but abducens nerve has gained greater acceptance and usage in contemporary anatomical and medical literature. First of all, thank you if you watched my video. In this video, I wanted to give anatomical information about the abducens nerve. If you like it, you can motivate me by using the like button. If you subscribe to my channel, I can work harder to create more videos. If you share, you will ensure that the video reaches more people. Working on anatomy is fun. Thanks. You can also follow my website.